going to do is our first one, which is the stat. So simply by pressing start, it's going to start the blood pressure measurement. Now this device takes it a little bit differently than you may be familiar with. As the air is going into the cuff right now, closing off on her arm, it's, it's starting to measure her BP. And when it gets up to a certain level, it will drop all the air out and you'll get a nice, smooth, fast blood pressure. Okay, 115 over 75. That took about 15 seconds. You, you're probably familiar with is taking blood pressure the other way, which is putting air into the cuff, bringing it all the way up to 160, and then slowly, and then slowly, slowly going down. letting it out. This that so takes good. about 45 seconds. And if you've ever had that done, you know like it cuts the circulation off. 30 the seconds is a lot of this process. So this is much smoother, it's much faster, uh, it's a better experience for the patient. But with that, you have to make sure the patient is at rest. Okay, that they're doing what we're doing right now, seated, arm passively supported, no talking, no moving, that sort of thing. If the patient is talking and moving during that 20 second period, you're not gonna get an accurate blood pressure, just like you wouldn't if the patient's moving around during a regular one. So that's very important, I just wanna emphasize that real quick. Um, so it might be faster to do it this way, but you have to make sure the patient is at rest. At rest. And you can do the temperature at the same time as you're doing it. So if the patient is a little chatty, you know, you can let them know <laughs> I'm going to need to do a couple other things here. So just take it easy for a minute. Um, <laughs> okay, so that's a single blood pressure. I have the ability now to save these readings. Um, and understand too that this is only saves when I do that into the internal memory. There will down the line be a, a workflow for you to get the, this data into EPIC in your computer system, but at the start, we're not there yet. So it requires IT involvement and all that stuff. But for now, you know, I think you're manually transcribing the, these readings into, into the record, uh, but know that you will get there eventually. Um, and then the, the next thing I wanna show you is, if you notice right below the start button, there's like this little clock button. That is this BP average that I set up for, for you guys. It's not for every patient, but I'm sure you get those patients that come in who you know are anxious, and their first blood pressure reading is really mm -hmm. high because they're anxious about something, and you know you wanna do multiple readings. Well, this is a really nice way to do that, to give you, to free yourself up to do some other things while you go through that process. So if I just press this blue button, let me start all over. So I press the clock button, and then this blue button, it's going to start this sequence automatically, and you can go back to the computer and just have the patient sit there quietly. It's gonna wait 30 seconds, so we've got 20 seconds left before it actually takes the first blood pressure, okay? The device isn't even going to count the first blood pressure. It's gonna cross it out as if it never happened. And then it's gonna wait a minute in between each subsequent blood pressure and average the next two. The reason why we do that is because of white coat hypertension and you know the anxiety a patient might feel just by seeing the white coat, being in a doctor's office, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So the American Heart Association recommends doing more than one blood pressure. This is a way for you to do it with a digital device that kind of frees you up uh, while the patient is still in the room. So this is the first blood pressure. It's relatively in the same neighborhood as your other one. I would say that you don't suffer from white coat hypertension. <laughs> but what you can see there, it's kind of hard to see, but there's the, it recorded the 115 over 78 on the first one, but it put a line through it. So it's not even gonna count that one, okay? And then it's, gonna, it's counting now, we're 37 seconds away to doing her second blood pressure. And that one will count, okay? So that whole process will take about four and a half minutes instead of the 20 seconds of doing a stat one, but I just wanted to point out to you that Four and a half minutes? Well, you have 30 seconds to start, you have 20 <laughs> seconds for a blood pressure, a minute, another 20 seconds, a minute, another 20 seconds, so roughly four minutes. <laughs> Not gonna have time for that? <laughs> Okay. It's like, well, again, but it's like uh, last. It's a nice to have. It'll be like yeah. last resort if that's the case. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. You need to go to the next room. Mm -hmm. and you can do another patient while this patient is. This yeah, room. I totally understand. It, it's there. It's not the you know the, the the start button. Initial one will just do a single one twenty seconds and you know 
sure the patient, um, you know, your, your workflow would dictate which, which way you choose to go. Of course. Yeah, you're, you're relatively the same. So that was your second one. And tonight one's going to count. We're gonna, another, a minute away from doing another one. So it will take some time. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to set you free. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate uh, scale in here. But I did see some.